want to welcome you this morning, and thank you for taking your seats. Uh, we're going to have some, some more snacks later, but don't, don't worry. My name is Domingo Hernandez Gomez, and I'm the director of the Woodrick Center for Equity and Inclusion here at Grand Rapids Community College, and it is my pleasure to welcome you this morning. Uh, we are very glad that you could make it to our 18th annual Latino Youth Conference, The Power of Dreams, El Poder de los Sueños. Uh, what, what does that mean? Um, what am I talking about? Not the dreams that you dreamt last night, but about your future. And what does it take to achieve your dreams? And we hope that today we can provide some answers to that question, or at least inspire you through our keynote speaker, the workshops that you will be attending, and also the people that you will be meeting today. There's a lot of people here. We have a lot of volunteers that have gone through this before when they were young. Please connect with them. Also, pay attention to the new ideas that you will be exposed to today, all right? Make connections. So please pay close attention, take notes. Do you have pens and pencils or paper? Make sure to take notes as you go to each of these sessions. You may have noticed, and I don't know, how many of you have opened your bags? I'm sure that you have opened it already. You have your bags ready? You may have noticed a T-shirt, right? And you probably have exchanged some of these t -shirt, those T-shirts already uh, because you may not have the right size. You may have noticed that there is a logo on the back, and it says Challenge Scholars, right? I will explain what Challenge Scholars is in a minute, but can I see by a show of hands Harrison Park and Westwood Challenge Scholars? Where is our Challenge Scholars? Can we see hands? Give him a, yes, give him a, yeah, a round of applause, great. Challenge Scholars, for the rest of you that don't know uh, what, what it is, it is a promise of at least two years of free college. If you attend, if you go to Union, do well and gradu graduate from Union. There is more information in your program. Uh, you have programs in the backs as well. There is a program and there is more information about Challenge Scholars. Can you promise me to show it to your parents or your guardians? Can I, can I hear a yes? yes? Thank you. All right, great. Now, the conference would not be possible with the, uh, without the gen generous support of our sponsors. So I'm going to take a minute to thank our sponsors uh, that have contributed so that this event um, could be done today. Our platinum sponsors are Grand Rapids Community College Foundation, Grand Rapids Community Foundation, Grand Valley State University Division of Inclusion and Equity, our gold sponsors are Grand Rapids Public Schools, Meyer, and also Meyer provided those bags that you have, so we thank, you, thank them for that. Our silver sponsors include Center for Latino Studies and Latino Business in Econom Economic Development at Ferry State University, Devonport University. Our bronze sponsors include Aquinas College, Irwin Seating Company, Sanchez Income Tax and Translation Services, LLC. People have worked very hard to make this event a reality. So I'd like to take a minute to thank all the people that worked to provide the food, to put the chairs where, where you're sitting on, and the tables, and everything that you see here today. Uh, but I'd like to start first with uh, to thank our, the leadership of Chris Arnold and Julie Mushing, chair and co-chair of the Latino Youth Conference. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Chris Arnold is part of our equity and inclusion team here at GRCC, and Julie Mushin, uh, she is from the ISD, the Kent ISD. Also, our, the rest of the team of the Latino Youth uh, Conference Committee, if you are in the room, could you please raise your hand so that we can see you. I know it's a big room. I want to thank Marisol Blanco from Grand Rapids Community College, Tamber Bostons, Melinda Isasi, Van Doe from uh, 
Grand Rapids Public Schools, sorry, Mark Johnson, 17th Circuit Court Family Division, Francisco Ramirez, who is sick today, so he couldn't make it, but he's, he was a key in, in organizing and putting this event together as well. Jennifer Smith, Grand Rapids Community College, Lea Tubar, a retired Grand Rapids Public School employee, and also one of the founders of Latino Youth Conference, Raul Isasi from Grand Valley State University, Lorena Aguayo Marquez, Grand Rapids Community College, and Raul Hernandez from Aquinas College. As you can see, there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, like I said, worked very hard to put this, this event. Um, thank you. To all our volunteers, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to support this conference. Your generosity is much appreciated. To our presenters, thank you for sharing your skill and expertise with our students. At this time, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jesse Bernal, Vice President for Inclusion and Equity at Grand Valley State University. Thank you. Thanks, Domingo. So um, to, to get to Domingo's point about today being an important day to listen and maybe take notes, we did this last year. We gave prizes to someone who answered a few questions. And usually I did this at the end, but let's just make sure you got one of the key points that Domingo stressed. The first person you can shout this answer out can go over there to Sal Lopez. Sal, can you raise your hand and grab a t-shirt? So this is the question. What program are you going to talk to your parents about when you get home tonight? Right here. What's it called? No. Right here. No, GRCC is one of them. It's a specific program. Challenge Scholars, yes, good job. Do you want to go over there? Sal will give you a shirt. So really an important day to really listen intently to all of your presentations, really listen to the messages that you'll hear today. It's a really wonderful opportunity. And so thank you, Domingo, for the introduction, for yours and uh, Chris's and Julie's dedication in supporting this Latino youth gather gathering for nearly the last two decades. Uh, this event and your work at GRCC has resulted in great uh, success and an advancement of Latino student achievement and increased college going rates. And so congratulations on your 18th conference. Uh, GVSU, Grand Valley State University, is really proud to join all of you today. Uh, most importantly, all of you youth and students. Um, as Domingo said, I'm the Vice President for Inclusion and Equity at GVSU, and I work with campus partners across the university and across the community to ensure that we have the most diverse faculty, staff, and most importantly, students. Uh, at our university that represent our communities and ensure that we have fair access to opportunities and success for all of our communities. And once you arrive to Grand Valley, we want to make sure you have the best experience possible, that you are successful that when you're there. And to ensure that we do that for all of our communities, and in particular our Latino communities, since that's the purpose of today's conference, um, just wanted to share a little bit about the, the programs and initiatives that GBSU is dedicated to ensuring the support of all of our students, and particularly our Latino students. As a Latino myself, the grandson of Mexican immigrants and the son of migrant farm workers from South Texas, whose only connection to Michigan was my mom picked cherries in Traverse City when she was about your age, um, I recognize that some of the efforts that we've implemented at GVSU and in partnership with GRCC, GRPS, and other universities who will be here today have served um, our youth well, would have served me well when I was your age and began as a college student and uh, as a Latino college student. We began by working closely with partners in the community and our schools, and many of you might know the Gear Up program or Wade McCree Scholars programs. And once Latinos decide to join GVSU, we have a special orientation for Latinos and their families called Laker Familia that bring you to campus early and help you meet other Latino families and engage with faculty and staff across the university. And then our students are supported through cohort and mentorship programs through the Office of Multicultural Affairs. And of course, there are many, many other opportunities that you're able to engage in, in many aspects of campus and student life, whether it's athletics or the band or many academic and cultural organizations. And we want to make sure you have all the opportunity to become Lakers. So while we try to keep tuition low, there are lots of scholarship opportunities, including being a partner in the Challenge Scholars, where anyone who successfully completes the program and graduates from Union High will get free tuition at Grand Valley. Um, in addition to that, we offer for anybody who is a GRPS graduate who meets our qualifications, 
you will automatically qualify for a GRPS scholarship, as well as a new scholarship that we started last year that provides a, a, an additional $4,000 a year to undocumented students, uh, descendants of migrant farm worker families, or Latino families in the community. It's called the Lupe Ramos Mantigni uh, Si Se Puede Scholarship, which really is dedicated to a pioneer of education both in Grand Rapids and then Cesar Chavez nationally. So if you decide to begin your career at GRCC, we also work closely with Domingo and other folks um, to ensure that we have transfer pi pipelines where you can do two years here and go to Grand Valley and go into graduate school at other schools or at Grand Valley if you choose. And of course, for those of you who excel academically, and I hope um, many of you are, are, are really um, working to do so, we provide even more support. But more importantly, GVSU wants to be in your life now and wants to be in your family's lives early. So come visit our campus, talk with our admission staff. Sal is one of them who's uh, sitting at the GVSU table today. And I'm also honored to be joined by um, one of the committee members, Raul Yasasi is in the back. If he wants to raise his hand, people can connect with him, but he's talking right now. And Taran McZee, who's also in the back. All G G uh, GVSU folks who are here today to chat with you and to learn more about your goals. So when I know I when I was your age, college wasn't even on my radar, and I had no idea what it was, to be honest. My mom didn't go to college, my dad didn't finish high school, uh, maybe that's similar for many of you, and no one in my family or school had ever gone off to college, coming from a small town in Texas. So I just thought I'd either join the military or work at the local Dairy Queen. I was fortunate to go off to college in California and loved it so much that I'm now working here for 18 years later. So being here today, you're ahead of the game. Soak up as much as you can. Be grateful for the people that are here to support you in your school district who has supported you to, to join this effort today. Use today to gain as much information as you can and begin thinking about what's next now and set a plan to get there. And know that you have a community here to support you, including the entire Grand Valley State University community, our great partner GRCC and GRPS, as well as the many other universities that you'll see here today. So now before I go, I won't lie, we'll give out two more prizes at least. So one isn't something I mentioned, just briefly. First person who can name the GVSU mascot. Yeah. Somebody yelled it. Okay, right there, go ahead. Lakers, where are the Lakers? Okay, this one was within something I, I said, so if you were listening because I said it pretty fast, where am I from? Texas, who said that? I heard Texas, who was it? Go, go grab a shirt. And the last one is really a freebie. You have to raise your hand for this, don't shout it out. Can someone tell me one thing that you hope to take away from today? Okay, first hand would right here in the Nike shirt. One thing you hope to take away from today. College? Knowledge, okay, knowledge is a good one, that's broad, grab a t-shirt. Thank you all for being here today and we're really excited that you have joined us. I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Ron uh, this morning uh, to offer some remarks as well from GRPS. Thank you. Good morning and thank you all for coming. Let's give it up to our friends at GRCC's Woodrick Center for Diversity and Inclusion for putting together this great event. Let's give a nice round of applause. Their leadership and support make the Latino Youth Conference possible every single year. And we cannot thank them enough for this opportunity for all of the students in our region. My name is Dr. Ron Gorman. I'm one of the assistant superintendents for the Grand Rapids Public Schools. And I have the pleasure of serving many of the students who are in this building today. I am also here because I'm filling in for our fearless leader, Teresa Weatherall Neal, who, cannot make it, who could not make it today but she sends her wishes and also a message to you. Keep dreaming, keep believing, and keep working hard to achieve your greatest potential. This room is comprised of many students from the Grand Rapids Public Schools, but this room is also comprised of other students throughout the region. I'd like to give a little shout out to not only the students in the Grand Rapids Public Schools at this time, so if you are a GRPS student, give yourselves a round of applause. As I noticed the groups walking in, I also noticed the group from Comstock Park. So where's the group from Comstock Park here today? 
Show the group from Comstock Park some love, please. Also notice students from Kelloggsville. Where's the Kelloggsville section? All right, Kelloggsville. And your mascot is the Rockets, correct? Okay, so the Panthers, the Rockets. Uh, Kentwood, where's the group from Kentwood today? And what's the mascot at Kentwood? Falcons, that's correct. And then we also have a group from Granville. So the group from Granville, the Bulldogs. As you can see, uh, we are represented in this region very well today at our conference. But I would not, I would not be doing a good job supporting my superintendent if I didn't share with you the many great things that are going on in the Grand Rapids Public Schools. The Grand Rapids Public Schools is a school system that has 16,800 students. And our Latino students are the largest and fastest growing student population in GRPS, comprising more than 6,200 students. You may be aware that the Grand Rapids Public Schools this year increased student enrollment. We've been declining in student enrollment for 20 years, and this year we were able to add 150 students. I would like to thank the students in this room today for sticking with the Grand Rapids Public Schools and making that possible. The Grand Rapids Public Schools will, be, it will continue to be one of, the urban, one of the few urban school districts in the state of Michigan and nationally to increase its enrollment. In addition, GRPS over the last few years since 2012 has increased its graduation rate by 50 percent. Some reasons for this are Hispanic Latino graduation rate increased by 15 points and the graduation rate for English language learners increased by 20 points. GRPS is a strong school district. The school districts in this room outside of GRPS are strong districts, but our districts cannot function without you. Students, as you are aware, you are the heart and soul of this Grand Rapids community. You are the visionaries. You are the future leaders of our city, state, and our country. Dream big, strive for success, and continue to keep up the great work. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Mindy Sassi, and I have the opportunity to present some winners for the art contest. So, um, did you guys like your, your t-shirts and the programs? Some amazing art on there, isn't it? So we're gonna recognize the individuals that created that. Our third place art contest winner is Elise Van Stensel from East Rockford Middle. So let's give Elise a round of applause. I don't think she was able to be with us today. Our second place art contest winner is Lizbeth Lopez, and she's from Southwest Community Campus. Let's hear it, Southwest. Congratulations, Lizbeth. And our first place art contest winner, also from Southwest Community Campus, let's give it up again, is Gustavo Vargas. Congratulations, Gustavo. Let's give him another round of applause for bringing some beautiful art to our conference today. So you guys heard the speakers before talk about college and opportunity and scholarship, right? So now we want to highlight four students who are in the places that you'll be in a, in a few short years. We're recognizing four scholarship winners in, t in two areas, one in academic progress and one in academic success. So I want to tell you a little bit about these four scholarship winners and pay attention to the things that they have done in their high school career that is preparing them um, when they go to college next fall. There's some amazing people. So the first person I'd like to talk about is the first winner of the Gil Guzman Academic Progress Scholarship, and that is Jobito Joe Rubio from Sparta High School. <laughs> 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 
Hobito's teacher describes him as a student who is focused on his education and is eager to continue his studies. His goal is to attend Aquinas College in the fall and to study nursing. Hobito was born in Georgia and lived in Mexico for some time, and he now lives with his aunt and uncle to pursue his educational goals. He also continues to support his family by working as well, and he often travels more than an hour away. This is a committed young man. He achieved all A's this past semester with his positive attitude and is focused on achieving small goals that can make larger, larger goals seem possible. Congratulations, Hobito. Thank you. Our next um, Gil Guzman Academic Progress Scholarship goes to Kenya Cifuentes from, and I think they're in the, in the audience, Grand Rapids University Prep Academy. <laughs> Let me tell you a little about Kenya. Kenya's teacher describes her as smart, ambitious, and organized student. Her goal is to attend Grand Rapids Community College in the fall and major in accounting. Kenya has participated in a number of activities, including American Sign Language class, swimming, and softball. So see, she's doing academics as well as extracurriculars. And she has a desire to assist the Latino community by volunteering and wants to make sure that more Latino students enroll and complete college. Let's give a hand to Kenya, amazing young woman. Next, we're going to highlight the uh, Roberto Science Academic Achievement Scholarship winners, and we have two winners again for that. The first one is Kelly Hernandez from East Kentwood High School. I heard East Kentwood. Give it up, East Kentwood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kelly's teacher describes her as mature and focused. She, can, she currently plays the flute and was a member of the Grand Rapids Symphony Mosaic Scholarship Program. Kelly is one of six kids and credits her mother's hard work as part of her success. Her mother was a single mother and regularly worked two shifts a day at her fast food employer to make sure that Kelly was successful and ready for school. Kelly plans to attend the University of Michigan Flint to study marketing with the long-term goal of a talent manager. So congratulations, Kelly, you're an amazing young woman. And our last scholarship winner is Edith Reyes Justo from Union High School. <laughs> Edith's teacher describes her as an exemplary student, excelling in academics, but also personal relationships by giving back to her community. <coughs> she is currently dual enrolled at Grand Rapids Community College, so she's taking college credits right now while in high school. <laughs> Helping the Latino community is part of Edith's plan, and she hopes to have her own business to support immigrant families. And she also talked about a soccer store too, right? That seemed cool. And she plans to attend Grand Valley State University, go Lakers, and study advertising and public relations. Congratulations, Edith. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Kevin Curiel. He is a student here at GRCC. Um, he's very committed to uh, the college and a lot of other organizations. But he is here to help introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Paul Hernandez. So let's welcome Kevin Curiel. Buenos dias. Oh, come on, guys. It's not that late. Buenos dias. All right. Good morning. So I hear you guys are skipping school or something. Is that right? Did I hear that? Oh, oh OK, OK, OK. <laughs> My name is Kevin Curiel Vasquez. I am from Guadalajara, Jalisco, born in, Me hey. born in Mexico, but raised in the United States. I've been in the US since I was eight years old. I am a first-generation immigrant, but most importantly, a first-generation college student. 
I'll be the first one in my family to receive a college degree, but also the first one in my extended family to receive a college degree in the United States. <laughs> Thank you. No pressure, right? <laughs> To make it to this point, I have to step out of my comfort zone more times than I can count. Let me show you an example of what this is like. We're gonna do a little quick exercise together, okay? I want you guys to just cross your hands. Get comfortable in your seats. There you go, get comfortable and relax. All right, you guys ready? This is where it gets a little tricky. I want you guys to switch arms. <laughs> what happened? I saw you guys out there. Some of you guys were like, I, I don't even know where to begin or where to even start. <laughs> And that's why we're here. As you get older in life, you're going to be put in situations where you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone to find a solution. You're going to be asked to push yourself forward in ways you haven't even begun to thought of yet. And this is what we are here to do, not to show you how to cross your arms in different directions, but to prepare you. For this, for this time, we are going to not just show you how to move forward, but at the same time, you need to understand that when you get put in these kind of situations, um, you need to begin to think to yourself, you know, how much are you willing to invest in your future? Now, we have, so although you're not in class right now, I want you guys to listen, to take notes. You're still here to learn and we're still here to teach you. A lot of work has been done to put this, uh, to put this conference together for you. We have a lot of volunteers. Bear with me, guys, I'm sorry, I have a cold. We have a lot of volunteers working here for you, but we are here because we believe in you. We have put this in front of you because you are the future of this community and you are the future of this country. No matter what situations you are put in, your circumstances do not dictate your future. Once again, your circumstances do not dictate your future because you have the power to change the ending of your story. A true advocate of this and example is Paul Hernandez. Dr. Paul Hernandez earned his doctorate in sociology, specializing in the sociology of education, social inequality, and diversity. Dr. Hernandez is a national recognized speaker and leader in the College Access and Success, community outreach and pedagogy for education working with underserved and underprepared students, and students at risk wrapping out of college and schools. As a former faculty member, nonprofit administrator, and educator in counseling, Dr. Hernandez works with the higher education institutes, K through 12, and nonprofit organizations, helping them further develop the, invo develop the involvement they work with in students and community. Prior to, prior to earning their degree, earning his degree, he was engulfed in gang culture and deep poverty, surviving the streets of Los Angeles. Pa, only, pa openly shares with others his unique personal story of being a youth at risk and his path and hopes in influencing others in his work. He has learned ways to empower youth, traveling in a similar path, and through his inspirational messages, hopes to share this lesson in passion with others working to address the multitude of challenges of facing the diverse population of our youth at risk. Dr. Hernandez has been nationally recognized for his work and was awarded the National Education Association uh, Weaver Human and Civil Rights Award, the Michigan Education Association Elizabeth Sedell Human Rights Award, the Larry T. Reynold Award for Outstanding Teachings of Sociology, and the Equity and Education Award by Michigan Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and an honor professor of the year. So without further ado, help me give a warm welcome to Dr. Paul Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you.